this 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 whole this whole spot over here was was underwater. So a lot of it is like the 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 front by the waterfront is above sea level, but then as you get into Hoboken, even back there deeper is even more below sea level. So all the water was rushing in, but when the tide rose, the water was coming from underneath and coming up the streets. So that part's lower. Right, like if you go in, if you go in like two more blocks and then all the way over, like there's a shop right that was destroyed, or an A&P, whatever it is, it was destroyed. It won't be open for like six months. That's how bad it was. You know, and the water over here was, was up to here. You could see in the restaurant, this restaurant was destroyed, everything. A lot of, a lot of people have, uh, yeah, a lot of people in Hoboken, what they do is they rent out their basement apart. Um, basically before Sandy, um, you know, here in Hoboken, I know they were gonna get hit hard. There's always flooding in Hoboken. Even if it rains hard, the water um, goes down the drains and it goes out the Hudson. So even if there's high tide, sometimes there's flooding in Hoboken, even if it just rains really hard. So with the water level coming up high, you know, into the city, and then it started coming up out of the pipes, you know, and uh, just three to four blocks down from my school, you know, there was water waist height, right at doorknobs of houses, you know, people's stuff got destroyed. So basically, you know, my school were up pretty high. Um, we're on the second story, so I was just worried about, you know, God forbid something came through the windows in the school. So we taped up the windows just to get ready. Uh, after the storm, um, you know, the school was closed for a week. Uh, we didn't have power in the school. Couldn't even get into the city for four or five days because um, it was shut down. Uh, there was flooding all over. A lot of cars were left here and the gasoline and oil leaked out. Um, there was a sewage plant where raw sewage came out, so it was a, it was a health hazard. They evacuated a lot of Hoboken, so I couldn't even come in to, you know, check in on the school and stuff. I came in uh, Sunday. It was, it was basically a week after Sandy, just to check in on the school and, you know, see how it was. But driving through the town, it was crazy. You just saw um, people's houses were gutted out. There's still water in some uh, low areas, um, so some streets were closed off. Um, even now, still, if you're walking around the neighborhood, you can see, you know, the dirt level and oil. Like I said, oil had leaked out of the cars. You can see the, the mark that it left. The FEMA trucks were right here on the main street. We're on the main street in Hoboken, Washington. And, uh, you know, the FEMA trucks were out there giving away ice and water. Some of the restaurants were giving away free food to people. Um, even if you look online and you Google, you know, like Hoboken after Sandy, the pictures that you see are crazy, you know, how high the water was. A couple blocks down there was an ambulance that got stuck in the water and the water's in the ambulance, it's crazy. But, you know, the, the, the town really got together. There were people who, who had electricity and just put, you know, a bunch of extension cords out and told people, you know, come if you want, charge your cell phones, charge your electronic devices. Um, like I said, the restaurants, some of them were giving out free food, coffee, you know, to help keep people warm and stuff. So the city, the city really banded together pretty good. Uh, the National Guard was here, just uh, they're helping evacuate people. Um, some people were told to leave but decided to stay. And, uh, you know, they were basically stuck in their house for two or three days with no electricity, no gas, no heat. So, um, you know, basically whatever they had ready for the storm. Um, a lot of the water that people couldn't drink, so if they didn't have anything in the house, you know, they were kind of screwed. Um, the National Guard helped evacuate people right here next to the school where, is where they had all their trucks um, to go in the areas where the water was too high, where a normal, you know, ambulance or police trucks couldn't get through because they would get stalled out and help and evacuate people. Uh, the National Guard stayed here for about two, two and a half weeks, so uh, it was kind of cool. I was closing up shop one night, leaving the school around uh, 10.30. And, uh, you know, one of the guys is like, hey, are you Lewis? Is that, is that your picture? You know, I have a big picture in front of the school um, from when I was in the Ultimate Fighter. And, you know, the guys recognize me and, you know, they want to take a picture and everything. And the guy says to me, oh, I want to take a picture with you. And I'm like, no, no, I want to take a picture with you because, you know, these guys were doing 12, 18-hour shifts, you know, helping out in the city. And, you know, their, their help was definitely appreciated. Make sure you guys go to fearthefighter.com. Any shirts that you purchase from the, from the Hero Line, um, the proceeds are going to go to the Hurricane Relief Fund to help out, um, you know, all the people that were devastated from the storm. You know, these shirts are for the real heroes. You know, we go in the cage and fight, but these guys were fighting for everybody. The police, the firefighters, the Army National Guard, the EMT. So make sure you guys check it out, purchase one of those shirts, and you could help out uh, everybody here on the East Coast.